دونوں فلم ایجوکیشن کی لہٰذا میں اس وجہ سے میں نے کافی ریسرچ کی اور کچھ بہت نوائز پولوشن انہوں نے کر دیا ہماری پاپولیشن Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of To Be Honest and today we have a very very special guest with us. Her name is Neha Wahi and let me introduce her properly. So Neha is an Associate Vice President, Capacity Building Vertical in, Care- in Career Launcher Education Founda- Foundation, which is the CSR initiative of Career Launcher. I remember being a part of Career Launcher as a student. <laughs> She's a psychologist, career guidance expert, and a parent coach. So Neha facilitates training in schools, colleges, universities, and corporate houses. And she loves working with the youth and has taken up more than 1,000 plus workshops across 1,500 plus schools and colleges across India. And she has 1,000 training hours under her belt, oh my god, across, you know, corporate corporate houses, colleges, schools, hospitals, hotels, NGOs, banks, and so much more. So uh, she is known for her popular neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, as it is known. And she is certified by Richard Bandler himself. We'll come and talk about that in a bit. So... You have so many certifications under your belt. You have, uh, you conduct so many different types of training. So uh, we'll talk all about that. This is just to let the viewers know what we are, um, you know, what are we in for a treat for? So that's the thing. So we'll talk about, I shared the questions with you and we'll talk about the beginning, which I always like to do is by talking about childhood tell us something about yourself your growing up years your teenage years and all those things what makes you you thank you so much malvika firstly for having me over and a uh, uh, big hello to everybody who's uh, watching us uh, you i would love to begin rather from my childhood because i have some very special memories i'm a forgy's uh, daughter and, and um, i have uh, vivid memories of my childhood uh, i think the earliest memory i have is somewhere of down south we began in a city called Coimbatore and I was introduced to a language called Tamil. There was no Hindi there. And I remember that my father would, uh, you know, put me on his scooter and then take me to the local markets because I was the only one in the family who understood the uh, Unnar and Moon and all. So, you know, we had to, if we had to buy vegetables, I better be there uh, with him. And uh, from Coimbatore, the next uh, posting was in Punjab. So my next lang- language immediately after Tamil was Punjabi. So from, as I said, from this, I shifted wow. to the Ula really Ada, the yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was still figuring out, uh, you know, when Hindi was going to begin. So it was much later when he got posted to Madhya Pradesh and Hindi came into my life. So this was, uh, you know, different cultures, different languages, uh, different cuisines, uh, you know, and, and a lot of different experiences that made a very rich childhood. And I think as uh, uh, army kids, we are very lucky somewhere to get that kind of exposure. People are very scared to change schools and I think me and my sibling must have changed about 10 to 12 schools in the duration of 12 years. So uh, I think that really contributes to who I am because you asked me what makes you you. So I think uh, that is something that uh, I would like to recapture from my childhood to answer you. Amazing. That's that's really <laughs> great to learn that you know these traveling experiences experiencing different cultures they really shape up your thought processes who you become as a person later in life so wonderful wonderful such a vivid exposure uh, that you can talk uh, you had in your childhood wonderful and um, any special incident any special thing that you would like to share with us 
which you think uh, you carry in your heart from your childhood a story or something so i think what i must tell the um, viewers and tell you also is that um, i was a very late born child my mother was uh, somewhere in her um, 40s mid 40s when i was born so my relationship with my parents were more like uh, you know having grandparents in the house and uh, there was a lot of age difference between uh, my sibling and i and she was away in hostels you know so my childhood i would say was more uh, quiet to myself but i was a very happy kid i loved spending time with nature i loved i i still have memories of gardens and flowers and playing with the uh, talking to ants and talking to trees so i think that is uh, that is where creativity comes <laughs> from yeah <laughs> also i think i'm mentioning this very specifically today because nowadays kids don't know what to do with their time they're mostly to get in the house there are a lot of friends around there are a lot of gadgets but we still don't know what to do with the time you know but i have very happy memories of being alone and yet being so productive and making toys out of nothing so that is one special memory i would like to share cool yeah yeah i'm unmuting myself and then speaking here yeah, that's why uh, so talking about teenage formative years because that's when we are uh, actually diving into what our personalities would be like in future so something about those years formative years any role models that you looked up to female role models especially uh, at that time because a lot of teenage girls we we have we all have been there insecure not knowing what to do with ourselves our thought processes conflicting and confrontational uh, you know attitude and uh, inputs from everybody around us something about that so uh, again a very important turning point in my life because uh, during my teenage years my dad retired and you know, we moved into a city called delhi suddenly and why am i spe- specifying because when you move in from a smaller place a cantonment very protected environment and you're thrown into a place like delhi where everything is moving at super fast speed and you're a teenager you have to catch up you know what that speed i think it is a lot of challenge that looking at you in your face and uh, you'll be surprised to know that i am a public speaker a motivational speaker but uh, my father would take me to mcdonalds they had recently opened chains across the country that time every week it was a regime that i was taken to mcdonalds so that the entire family could sit down and i would go and place an order because i was such an introvert i was such a shy person that i actually stood at that um, you know counter for hours but i couldn't order right so this was my training that was being given to me so i would you know break out of that uh, cocoon and uh, find some confidence to speak to people i didn't know to interact with the outside world and yes uh, i think i can count count, uh, count many role models around because everybody i looked at was like wow because i hadn't seen you know um, people dress up like that carry themselves with that confidence kids with that kind of clarity though i think we have a lot of exposure uh, in the um, uh, army schools as well in cantonments as well but it's a different kind of setup a very different kind of life after all so um, one role model who has stayed constant throughout my life was my sister is my sister and a very strong personality a very successful uh, woman in herself and um, since she had been in delhi for a long time uh, doing her education i think she was my role model because the way she adapted to the whole culture to the environment I kept telling myself Neha you can do this. So I'd like to quote her. Beautiful. Sisters are you know always so special. I never had one Absolutely. growing up. So I mean mm-hmm. I have two daughters now so I think they have each other's back. So wonderful. Absolutely. That's such an important thing you mentioned because I came from a small town and when I moved to Delhi I was I kind of cushioned the culture shock because i read a lot so that helped me get over that so but then wonderful you had such you had your sister and you had your family uh, you know all okay. coming together to propel you forward wonderful and uh, so let me also ask you that you are a career counselor so did you always know what you wanted to be into not at all and um, this is a very important portion if any student happens to be listening to this interview i think it's an extremely important message that i like to give that i did not know what i wanted to do and this is a career counselor triple certified career counseling telling you she didn't know what she wanted in life yes i knew i wanted to do things around people and the more i broke out of my cocoon 
I realized it had to do something with the human connect. But beyond that, honestly, I didn't know. And uh, I just remember that I, in grade eight, we were exposed to something called NI, newspaper in education. Times of India had a segment for kids. And I remember there was a very famous career counselor who would write a column every week. So as a kid, I would look at the entire class of 40, how intrigued they would be about different careers and you know the way she would write about it and wonder, can I ever do something like this in life? That is the only memory that I have of my childhood connected to my career today. Also, I think I never started as a career counselor. This came my way. And I think as we gradually proceed, I'll be very happy to tell you how I reached here. Because uh, what first came to me was psychology, followed by my, my trainings. Yeah, and that, then that is how I landed here. That was supposed to be my next question. But I also want to want to uh, want you to say this, that is it okay not to know what you want to do at the age of 17 or 18? It is not just okay, it is, it is absolutely normal. It is how it should be. Because if we, if we know everything, there is no fun in life. What are we going to explore? What are we going to, uh, you know, discover as we walk along? So even in my counselings today, kids come, you know, with a ready-made, uh, they're looking for a ready-made solution. Mom is going to write out a piece of, a, you know, paper and she's going to tell us these are the three things I should do. I tell them, no, I'm just going to knock on your heads and move away. This is your journey till you don't explore, till you don't ask questions, till you don't make wrong choices. How are you ever going to be happy about what you're doing? So I think it's absolutely normal and uh, kids should uh, pat their backs. Parents should learn to relax and remember their times because I would really ask all the parents watching us that how many of you are pursuing what you ever thought in life you would, you know, today. Uh, that's the reason I want, I asked that question. <laughs> yeah. And also how many of you knew what you would want to do? So today with all the pressure that we put on the kids, I think somewhere even if they have some bit of clarity, we snatch it away from them. So I think it's absolutely normal to take small steps and go ahead. So wonderful. We'll come back and talk about psychology. I am very interested in this subject. I actually <clears throat> wanted to pursue it, but could not for a number of reasons. But you please talk about it. I love psychology. I'm absolutely in love with this. And I think uh, um, if there was one subject that helped me fall in love with education, with academics, it was psychology. And I think it should be made mandatory for everybody in school. Because we are end of the day uh, dealing with human beings at every point in time. So it would be so wonderful to understand how the human brain works. How the human mind works actually. I should have used the word mind not brain. And uh, you know how people perceive things. Where do they operate from? How do uh, you know we think? How do others think? So it is a very beautiful subject in itself. And with the number of specializations that are available for students today, I think it's a great opportunity, a career opportunity in itself. Especially for girls who come from smaller families, smaller cities, who probably do not want to be exactly a teacher, but want to be a part of a school setup. Or people who do not want to do MBS, but want to be in corporates. People who don't want to be doctors, but want to be part of you know, hospitals. I think it's an excellent subject. And the more I study it, the more I fall in love with it. I still continue doing my you know, certifications, diplomas around uh, uh, psychology because obviously I don't have too much time for longer courses now. But I think it is so intriguing that anything and everything uh, that uh, would revolve around it, whether it's emotional intelligence, whether it's neurolinguistic programming, whether it's parenting, whether it's a child's cognition, I would love to study about it and continue to do so. Wonderful. This is how it Wonderful. I think it has a lot of potential because uh, I read a lot about it as I'm into academic writing. So because of being into OB and training and development, you also tend to venture into those areas of uh, psychology sure. and uh, learning. Uh, so uh, that's how I think it, it has a lot of uh, Yeah, and potential. you're, you're making mention. a very good point because I think even in my trainings, my psychology somewhere really helped me. It helped me connect better and fit the whole scene, I think, much better. Because they help you, you know, put you into that grid where you start thinking like that. So, yes, a very good point made, I think. Malcolm. I think really even for it. HRs, it's, it's worth pursuing. I have a degree Certain. in psychometric, uh, a certification in psychometric analysis. <laughs> oh, I that's interesting. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. And that's how I, I completely uh, love uh, studying about this the subject I should pass on some reports to you for reading now <laughs>
I can't say I can do that now. <laughs> it's been quite a while that I completed my certification, but it's wonderful. Uh, uh, and going forward, I definitely would in a bit, though. But we are not talking about me. So let's come back <laughs> to you and uh, uh, tell me about your academic experiences. Why I ask this is because you hold certifications from some of the most prestigious institutes in the world, uh, universities. I stayed in New Jersey, so I know Princeton. We have been on the campus, and it's just absolutely amazing uh, being uh, in in such an environment which is so stimulating. Uh, so tell us about that. So, uh, Malika, I think I was very clear in my head. Uh, I always worked with a very, very, um, with a very clear focus. You know, every time I did a training assignment, and I think God was, uh, you know, always by my side, walking that journey with me. I got some excellent clients, and I think I'm talking about almost 10, 15 years back, uh, being paid as one of the, uh, I think, highest paid female trainers in the country. I made a promise to myself that whatever I get will go into my education because I started very early. And let me reveal a secret. Wonderful point. Two. Wonderful point. Yeah. Because women often tend to overlook this aspect of things. Thank you for Absolutely. sharing. Absolutely. And I, I would rather want to, you know, elaborate on this. See, uh, and I'll be very honest. I didn't have a choice. There are two ways you can become a trainer. One, you have good 30, 35 years of industry experience. You come and share it with people as a consultant or a trainer, right? Second is you're beginning at 20, 22, 23. You're a young girl. People look at you and say, "What? You want to train us? We are double your age, right?" When you come into the industry at that age, what is your option but to not have enough education to support what you have to speak? So my only option, because I was very passionate about my trainings, I never ever wanted to, you know, let go of that line. So I knew the only way of survival was go learn something good, impart. You know, do the next thing, impart. Keep upgrading, keep upskilling. And yes, this is one uh, learning that comes to me from my father, and I stand by it. I give it to my daughter today, and I would like every daughter to, you know, follow this. Your best friend is your education. Nothing. and nobody would come by and help you support you stand by you you know the way your education will and nothing no course goes waste you want to do cooking you want to do um, you know a cosmetic program something on cosmetics cosmetology you want to do something on nutrition you want to do history you want to do psychology i, I promise you in life you will be able to fit something everywhere you know somewhere rather if not everywhere One so, to four. Thank you, you know, with, for saying all those things. Thank yeah, you. Because I practically lived that Malvika when when I was carrying my baby, I was you know very bored. I had a uh, you know a slight complication, so I was supposed to be bedridden. That's when I did my nutrition and dietetics, which had nothing to do with my psychology. Okay, it was a short program, and I was very excited. Nine months. Okay, I have nine months to do this. And would you believe that my first training program with a bank was nutrition and dietetics? I never ever thought that I would train in you know in that particular field, but how education comes your way, and after that, uh, you talking about Princeton, Dale Carnegie. I actually did uh, cross cultural etiquette grooming. I never knew then that I would be working with a hotel, teaching them uh, dining etiquettes. So you don't know what comes your way. You know, small certification in English language. I did a lot of programs in vocabulary building. So all I'm you know trying to say here is nothing goes. for a waste you education know, you are always... reminding me of and uh, this is completely off the topic but i just want to say this i had read it in a comic book in a hindi comic book i don't know if you know about super commando dhruv but <laughs> i used to read those raj comics and there was a line in that uh, uh, comic book where the this superhero says that padhai likhai kabhi bekar nahi jati so uh, that has stuck kabhi bhi nahi and you you are just uh, reiterating that very part of you know and thank you thank you for saying that absolutely these aspects are very important and uh, you know uh, when uh, children or kids we are talking to people around us they do not or cannot somehow uh, articulate all these things and speak to them but when a professional like you speaks you you know what aspects to cover while you are talking about uh, certain special things like career and yeah 
my internet connection is unstable okay all right so let's move on to the next question and uh, i would like you to talk about nlp uh, we are hearing a lot about this uh, um, uh, this substream and there is a lot of important work being done there is a lot of uh, talk in the industry in the corporate about using it uh, for training purposes so please elaborate a little bit about nlp and how it is useful i'll make it very simple nlp stands for neuro linguistic programming neuro linguistic Okay, training your brain or your mind using language skills. As simple as that. Now I'll ask you, Malvika, if you want to have a glass of uh, what water, what do you do? I'm in the fridge. Have water, or are there some technical steps that you would follow? I'm asking you. Uh, unless if you have already stored water in your refrigerator, uh, if then you can just. pick the bottle out and get a glass and pour yourself a glass of water but if there is no water you'll have to first go fetch water and then uh, yeah go and put it in the fridge wait for it to cool yeah. down just in case but it goes yeah i mean is there is there a yeah but but, but you you're not using science you're not giving instructions okay stand up walk to the fridge open the door open a bottle pour you're not doing that right it has become a part of you now it is a habit you know what to do when you have to drink water so something as basic as that right suppose i could train my mind to to keep happy always like that to be successful make positivity a habit make making money a habit okay saying no to negativity a habit not being angry a habit suppose i could program am my mind that i don't have happening inside my body and my brain that is neural counseling they are the most challenging because telling a parent who has possessed a child for 15 16 years 18 years of their life so strongly and who feel that they are the only people who should technically be deciding for the child and you jump in as a counselor and say no you're wrong you know last 15 years what you've been thinking is not how you should think i'm telling you it's very challenging you're entering a territory which is uh, completely not yours it's it's an enemy territory and it's a, you know it's a line that you have to cross very very subtly and convince them and um, the, the i think the only um, good thing here around the whole thing is that the child is very happy that somebody is speaking for me you know that is your incentive for uh, fighting this battle like you were talking about uh, uh, you know entering a room full of men and then to, uh, having to tell them how to dress behave talk and uh, so there is a reluctance that you face so how do you deal with because this is very common as trainers we have come across people who are very reluctant to be told anything anything even if it is for good bad it does not matter there is just a wall that is there and how do you break it how do you reach out how do you navigate that i think it begins from this conversation that we are having where we know that it is going to be there so if you don't get it i think it's it's a lucky day for you but if you walk into that room with the, expecting that there is going to be resistance reluctance i think it's all right you're at least prepared you're not it's not happening in your face you know it's going to come by way secondly i think we should learn to ignore everything doesn't have to be addressed this is my personal learning you know when you try to change everything when you try to fight everything resist everything push your point through they will push it back harder but when you just sail through and say really no problem but i think you could just hear me out maybe i you know i might be just about maybe able to change something i think it becomes easier so this is and the second thing that i like to say is please accept your own self first be be very confident about what you're going to tell them is right you know because they have the power to uh, you know to put you in that spot of disillusionment where you suddenly start feeling uh am i am i right you know what i'm telling them is is it, is it even uh, what i'm supposed to be telling them they can do that to you they can intimidate you so first let's not lose that confidence and remember that you are going prepared and you know nobody knows your business better than you please remember that that's your subject you are the trainer nobody takes away that power from you i remember i i worked in training and development for briefly for about 2 years so we were into corporate training and 
we were conducting assessment centers for senior managerial roles and uh, when you participate as an assessor at 23 24 i mean that was my almost my first job and i know my uh, head of department would make sure that we wear uh, you know appropriate clothing so you you know you have to put across a certain persona to be able to be taken yeah. seriously so yes. the way you carry yourself the the words that you choose all those things they have a value they are perceived in a certain manner absolutely and absolutely. It, and the good thing is you can work around it you can always use it to your advantage if you very know very well raised that they say that they say that you know the first few the first impression happens in the first few seconds of people seeing you don't don't even have to open your mouth you know they they see you and the first impression of whether i have to listen to this person or i don't have to listen to this person has already happened so very well uh, said uh, malvika i agree with you there thank you so uh, the next question i wanted to talk about is you you worked a lot with the youth uh, you have mentored them and uh, you have been a career counselor to them how different are the millennials and uh, the younger generation uh, after coming after millennials how different are they from what we were and what previous generations were what is one concrete difference that we should know as parents and as caregivers and um, as teachers i think globally every parent every adult who's going to be listening to this will agree with me that this is a generation of mujhe pata hai i know i know what to do i know how to do it or let me be okay you hardly come across children nowadays who say we're looking for advice we're looking for guidance they're looking for a conversation they're looking for a dialogue they're looking for you to challenge them so they can challenge you back but how many of them are actually looking for direction i doubt so i think it is very challenging as a mentor using that word is scary malika you know i'm very scared because you are putting yourself at a pedestrian where now the child is now thinking in his head really i mean do you even free to judge you <laughs> absolutely so i think it's a very uh, a very very critical stage you know uh, in time when we are dealing with these millennials there is so much learning that is coming back our way they are teaching us patience they are teaching us friendship they are teaching us to unlearn and relearn as adults on how to deal with uh, uh, you know children we i do a lot of uh, you know these forums uh, they call it ask the experts where we talk to parents and guide them and i was i'm smiling because i just got a question uh, same question that uh, you know is this all about rational thinking all the time i mean is it just that because you have to give them a reason for everything every time you ask them to do something why, they say why, why? Seven year old uh, uh, so uh, for her it is always like rationalizing why do we need to do why do i need to do this so mm-hmm. you'll have to sit every single time you have to sit and give a a sane a logical reason why uh, you have to yeah. do but uh, you know when, when our kids are not listening malika mm-hmm. you know from a mother to a mother don't you think it's the best thing that a child can do ask you why this is supposed to be i done. never take away that a dissenting voice from her i have never i mean especially as a daughter i make sure that i do not ask her to lower her voice i do not ask her to not uh, protest those are the things which i make sure that i don't do so thank you for yeah. saying that it's a it, it is of exactly. any value that behavior yeah absolutely and i i think it is very see uh, one thing i'd like to tell all the parents if you want your child to be in a habit of taking advice then please remember that that child will take advice from anybody walking down the road because you are teaching the child every single day it is all right to take advice and you need to take advice you are not uh, sufficient you need somebody else to help you do that secondly as a mother especially uh, and fathers of daughters you know this this message goes out to them we don't want them to soil their hands why are we only looking at making princesses why are we not looking at making leaders entrepreneurs uh, thinkers visionaries similarly why are we not growing up men who are gender sensitive or boys who are gender sensitive or or, or we're talking to them about uh sex education why are we not changing the whole idea around parenting when they are ready to talk about it well i i think uh, some of these are such a taboo topics that even schools would uh, just beat around the bush or would just uh, 
approach them like walking on eggshells like you said uh, about sexual awareness and um, responsible sexual behavior especially uh, amongst teenagers those are important discussions and uh, uh, yeah uh, how do you think that we can, like you talked about men raising daughters so men raising boys what do you want to say to them so i think it is the, it, it is equal ownership completely equal ownership that we see and if you're talking about an equal world it begins right here it begins right here so every time a, a girl is told uh, you sit let your brother go and do this you know the outside chore or let the brother sit down let the girl get up and do something i think we're going wrong in parenting the first time we buy a doll for a girl and a ball for a boy we've gone wrong so i think it's high time we break out of these stereotypes we stop painting blue walls for boys and pink walls for girls we start telling them it's an equal world you choose your colors and it is fine not to like dolls it is fine not to like blue color it's all right so i think it begins from there and uh, i also see because we work with about 1500 schools across the globe so let me tell you malika there's a lot of difference i see how how um, you know people invite us to have these conversations with children today it is beyond the taboo you know parents are made a part of this session it's so overwhelming i feel so happy i always you know congratulate the school for that thought when they invite us to speak to the children and the parents especially middle schoolers when they're just beginning to understand their bodies and the changes are happening i think it is extremely um, important and if you're talking about uh, developing and uh, being like other countries and uh, emulating what other people are doing then let's do it completely let's do it you know let's not shy away from some things and uh, pick up only the others that are convenient or comfortable for us so i think uh, we are doing a good job i do see a major difference in schools and uh, the way uh, they are talking to kids and we have to keep doing that at a micro level within our families as well oh very nicely explained and thanks for uh, uh, also sharing that such dialogues are happening now uh, which i uh, i as a parent have always felt that there is a lot of gap in the way uh, you know maybe it's just personally me thinking that more needed to be done in these uh, areas so um let's come back to talking about we talked about how we should be raising our girls and uh, how equality begins at home so talking about women empowerment when uh, taking a step forward so do you call yourself a feminist or how do you define feminism personally i think uh, if believing in i'm really sorry malvika i'll have to put you on hold there's a there's a bell i'm so sorry to disturb this yeah okay so um as per your question i think uh, for me it is nothing but as i've already said it's nothing but an equal world most of us you know look at feminism very differently we think we're looking at a better world or more opportunities for women but that's not where i'm coming from i think as long as we know that we share equal opportunities we are given equal opportunities we are believed in and uh, we've given enough evidence whether it be brawn over beauty beauty over brawn brain over brawn brawn over brain i think we are we've done that we've nailed every bit of it and uh, we are not uh, any more in times where the man would go out hunting and the woman would sit back and just sow seeds we are all multitasking we are at various levels of leadership we are at various uh, um, you know in, in various industries various reams walking the talk talking the walk doing everything so it is our world it out there and uh, more we accept ourselves and more counterparts accept ourselves i think we are at peace wonderful wonderful i mean exactly my thoughts on how what i think about uh, you know being a woman and going out there in the world and doing your thing so wonderful for sharing that and uh we cannot move forward without acknowledging this aspect that we have very few women leaders and uh very few once in a while you would come across a michelle obama so why is that we have very few women in change maker positions no malvika i think we're still stuck somewhere i we really need to you know go back and uh, revisit the records you talk about fmcg you talk about beverage you talk about by the way beer and beverage you talk about 
tractors you talk about medicine you talk about pharma uh, uh, rather uh, education you talk about banking you will see a woman leader there it is just that we still haven't we still haven't accepted we still haven't realized her presence there we still haven't acknowledged it that, and that, is, uh, that is, i think but i i uh, i'm i would interject here and say this that that is another important aspect that you're putting forth which also means that women in position powers are not uh, celebrated as much as men are is that true absolutely yes and i agree i'm not refuting the fact that probably a lot of fortune 500 companies will still have very few female uh, leaders or ceos i'm not refuting but then i do see the numbers growing and you know industries where you're not expecting to see a woman so i am reminded of ursula burns i don't know if you've heard of her she's the one who um, led xerox and she comes from a very small poor village in africa somewhere and you know her mother had once told her when every time rather when she was bringing her up she would say i would not want you to do something for yourself i would like you to do something where you bring along another 500000 people with you it shouldn't just be you and thanks to her i think today just with one socket and one table thousands nay lakhs lakhs have found occupation long lakhs have found uh, you know ways to ways and means of making money so i think as a woman if you put us in a leadership role we have in us an innate ability to bring along a community i have to write an article on uh, when women's leaders speak organizations should listen i am so <laughs> grateful that we are having this conversation giving an insight yeah. into uh, what it means and i, I, I mean it it's a yeah, lost I mean opportunity it. if they if the if the corporate or wherever if they don't yeah so i think this countless uh, you know memories that experiences that we've seen i i keep thinking of kiran bedi you know she was the only she is the only uh, cop i'm not using the word female cop purposely she's the only cop who actually gave out a ticket to a prime minister's car so i really want to ask this on a public forum how many how many people could have done that how many could have changed a tihar jail to a tihar ashram you know from a, a oprah winfrey or a michelle obama or we talk about malala or we talk about you know the various women we talk about sushmita sen who's redefining relationships who's de- redefining motherhood altogether so i think it is not just about putting us in leadership roles it is just about giving us our space and letting us do what we are and that very, is very very nice to tell people very nicely but just let us be just let us go and do let us do our shit please <laughs> yeah exactly and there'll be so many ways in which you know we would be able to contribute and uh, make a difference so just all we need to do is be, you know let us be allowed to do what we want to that's all yes so um Mm, role of men in women empowerment i think this is another important aspect before we wrap up this section about uh, uh, serious issues so how can women uh, how can men be a part of this uh, movement it it begins from uh, the day we uh, conceive daughters i think it is the father first who picks her up in the hand in his hands and says uh, you know you're going to live a life of your choice it begins from there it begins from the very thought that we are not uh, killing uh, you know female babies anymore and we are uh, raising them and we are raising them with equal opportunity so uh, i know it's cliche but we say there is a men inside a women and a he inside a she but that is how it is that is how it always will be and till the time uh, you know fathers brothers husbands bosses colleagues don't stand up for their uh, women counterparts for their uh, women it is never going to be a complete cycle and i totally believe in the theory of yin and yang a night will always culminate into day a day will always break into a night ultimately right so uh, these are two energies which are 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 meant to coexist none or neither would want to you know uh, uh, go over the other be or be overbearing it has to be parallel at all times so they will always be in balance they will always be important for our empowerment always uh i would ask a hilarious question any etiquette related incident that you would like to recall which has happened and found it 
you know track you up yeah yeah malvika i have seen a lot of i know most of you have only heard but i've seen a lot of chicken pieces flying out into different plates i have physically uh, you know literally seen them happen on 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 courses which have seven course meal laid out and there are two rows of people sitting across and people are struggling with the fork and the knife and then suddenly you see a nice chicken piece flying and the other person is wondering i am a vegetarian i didn't serve myself chicken where did this come from and then you ignore such things and just signal and sits all right go for the next piece so i have enough experiences of that and that is something that really makes me laugh even today so yes this is something i wanted to tell you all right that's wonderful and um another question that is uh, which is again coming back to important aspect of uh, what you do is uh, any uh, advice or any suggestions for people who have allotted goals for themselves and are struggling to reach those self development goals so what would you like to say to them so i would like to just tell them that please make it a part of your day like i said please make it a habit don't keep it some uh, you know very uh, far off don't say okay my goal is a month away my uh, goal is um, maybe you know 10 kilos away or 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 another lakh rupees away say it is a part of my day every single day and i'm working towards it let it be very specific let it be very measurable let it be very tangible very practical very realistic at all times and do not forget to reward yourself even one small step taken towards it must be rewarded for self motivation because that's how you know we we function as human beings we will we will need that motivation to keep going so let's break it down into smaller uh, portions and let's uh, eat a bite full each time is is my suggestion wonderful great advice and um now tell us something a little bit about you as a person are you religious spiritual okay i have infiltration in my area of work <laughs> this is positive infiltration don't worry <laughs> positive energy <clears throat> oh my goodness hi sweetie oh my goodness <laughs> hi you've got to unmute yourself she please i my daughter's run up to see her look at her <laughs> this one is hey, this is the infiltration hi hi, hi. can you say hi ah. very good i'm such a big hi what's what's your name what's your name ah. no uh tell me about whether you're religious or spiritual or how you manage your mental well-being i'm both i'm religious and spiritual and i draw a lot of strength from my uh you know my my daily regime of prayers of chanting i'm also a reiki uh, master healer and i do a lot of uh, healings as well uh, as in a lot of cases we we self heal we try and help and reach out to people who are in need and i think uh, these are very important things to do because this is your time in the day when you can connect with your own self and you can connect with the uh, higher energies around you when you can feel the uh, blessings uh, you know that the uh, universe has to offer you and when you can remember to pay uh, enough gratitude for all that you receive every moment so yes i'm very very spiritual and uh, i think i would not be who i am without my belief in uh, you all right wonderful wonderful and uh, now we'll have some little bit of light questions for you about your likes and dislikes so what is a comfort food or your stress busting activity that you like to do ice cream tubs without a doubt ice cream i won't even say ice cream cups or cones i'll say tubs and you can see my size i i i can have that any time uh, you know in the day at nights whenever i wake up so my a freezer will always have a tub <laughs> waiting so yes that is comfort food certainly uh, any stress busting activity a- anything that you're watching on any ott platform you are a psychologist i think you must have a favorite crime show do you Uh, I I don't get enough time to watch uh, uh, you know uh, too much of uh, Netflix or other uh, platforms to be honest I'm a very avid reader I enjoy more of uh, reading rather but yes there are a couple of uh, you know good shows and good movies and uh, with family watching them all the time I do get my small snippets in between whenever I get time a- 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 any book that you would like to recommend or you want people to know about that they should 
um uh, i have recently finished a book if anybody is interested it's it's called the code of an extraordinary mind it's by vishen lakhani it's a very interesting book a very different book and it questions the very fact that how for years for generations we've been doing something just because people are doing it and how it's you know the right time to start questioning and figuring out that why are we doing what we're doing so i think i really found that interesting otherwise my favorite would always be tuesdays with mori that is one book that i highly recommend to everybody it's a wonderful and, uh, i think uh, yes a thousand spend, uh, splendid sons by khalid hussain another Sen, yeah. beautiful masterpiece on uh, relationships so i think yes we have some great work uh, that one could always step by okay and um, your favorite old song that you can sing because as i shared with you mine is an old movie oh. channel i can show you all the posters yeah, that i, I have so, <laughs> yes i i like a lot of oh yes i see a lot of nice posters yeah, behind yeah. you <laughs> yes, so uh, yes, there are some nice songs. I am a romantic, so uh, there's a, a beautiful number from Sil Sila Dekha Ek Khab To Ye Sil Sile Koi. I'm very fond of that song, and uh, uh, then there are uh, there's Rim Chum by Kire Savan. I think it it has uh, Amitabh. I'm not too sure, but yes, I keep hearing that number again. But some beautiful numbers, I think. And uh, uh, if I uh, remember an old time, uh, old time hit when I was a kid, it was. Uh, हमको मन की शक्ति देना I can do it, and I am doing it. Okay, so I think it is incomplete without the second part, which is very important. Where uh, uh, gratitude has to come in and say, uh, and there has to be a thank you prayer, which says, "I am being able to do it." So thank you for uh, you know, sending all the energy and all the uh, you know the, the I think facility to be able to do it. Wonderful. And uh, we would be wrapping up now. We have um, and we had so many. uh disturbances in between technical glitches and i am really thankful to you neha for being so patient and kind you kept coming back so many <laughs> meeting links that we have to send across uh and before uh, we wind up let me just ask you this one last question is what is your message to all the men and women who would be watching this uh I I don't know if I'm, I'm in a position to advise but I'd like to suggest yes certainly my message is that there's just one life and I know that uh, we hold it very closely and we live in fear of, of losing things of losing people but I think one has to go all out and play only then you hit a six so there are uh, you know a lot of times in life when you have to look beyond your fears and trust me life is beautiful it will give back manifold but we have to learn to open our arms and receive so just stay positive believe in yourself and uh, do not give up any dream sooner or later in life go for it and fulfill it that's what i like to say thank you neha thank you for your time it has been such a wonderful session i'm sure you have been busy it's still a weekday did you work my pleasure ma'am thank you it has been very nice interacting with you and thank uh, you so uh, much and i am so sorry for all the glitches and all the trouble you don't that have you have to be <laughs> I, i understand uh, we are on the other side of the world now we know the what's happening and its technology everywhere so don't I, don't worry don't I, worry I, at all i thank you so much and wonderful Good interaction you. i'm sure people who would be watching this would learn a lot take away a lot from this episode so thank you again so. and uh, yeah yeah it will it certainly will there were a lot of in- interesting and informative stuff that we discussed and hopefully like you you talked about so thank you thank again you so and i'll just wrap it up and you can sure, leave the music Margarita. if you like yeah but when do you plan to air this and how do you do I it i will have to edit it a little bit and then uh, yeah. i hope to do it by this weekend Oh okay that's so it'll be it'll be right. yeah. I I do it all everything myself so it won't take long yeah one stop shop yes Great. yes everything so nice uh, happy to see your daughters as well lots of love to them and nice to connect with you I'll thank Deepa for this and uh, thank you let's stay connected I I'll, I have to yeah. give my own thanks to Deepa yeah. yeah bye Leah see you can you say bye, bye Leah bye. yeah can bye can I get a flying kiss please one flying kiss please
Okay, I won't travel. All right, Malvika, take care. See you. Bye. third episode already and we are going strong so if you liked our uh, content our interview do give it a like share and subscribe um, and keep coming back for more this is me signing off goodbye and take care of yourselves